All right. She seems so reserved and timid the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up, she finds her comfort in the world of books and not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a, read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at a minimal level. <laughs> at this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if your story makes me think, it takes me to another world, and then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. <clears throat> That's right, you usually write, like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You looked a piece of scrap people behind behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud. And give that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. So you always slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. Oh. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Hey, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Oh. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Huh? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone's even. Um, yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it'll help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Phil Sama? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I, I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and uh, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm, Phil Sama. You all, I'm defensive against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Well, okay, I've decided then. I'll join the Lit Club. Yeah! One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone, I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting that we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Phil Sama, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Yeah, yeah. Can I really impress the star, the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety willing up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up the food. Hey, Phil Sama, once since we're already here, do you want to walk me home? That's right, so Yuri and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! Oh, boy. With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, so Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. A limerick. There once was a man named Enos who had a 12-inch poem. Okay. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Sometimes good might happen. Whoever writes your lecture poem the most. Okay. The fuck? 
beauty. Uh, rose. Together. Fantasy. Unending. Joy. Imagination. Yes. Uh, melody. Daydream. This is great. This is very exciting. Oh, uh, let's see. Vivid. I don't even know what the fuck effulgent means. Effulgent? What on earth? I, don't, I have no idea what that is. Whoa, wait a minute. Inferno, contamination, death, agonizing? What's going on with the words? Journey. It's weird that some of them are so negative and some are, like, happy. Bliss. Vibrant. Ambient. Okay. Uh. Existence. I'm trying to do all happy things. Massacre. What the? Massacre. Peace. Unrequity. <laughs> uh. Rainbow. Hope. And passion. Oh, there's one more. Comfort. There you go. Let's see what my poem is. Hi again, Phil Sama. Glad to see you didn't run away with us on us. Ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for you, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Phil Sama. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Maybe you drive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Mmm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Phil Sama always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without, even me, without me even asking, like cooking and cleaning my room. How dependable. <clears throat> Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Phil Sama become good friends too? Uh... Sayori? Huh? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, uh, you even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori. Hey, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. So you already made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Hey, sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place, so any nice gesture for you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. <clears throat> is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This. How's this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. What is it? I can't wait to see what the book is. Yeah. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered. 
I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book here he gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. <clears throat> we just need a way of showing that to everyone, something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come to the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? So after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Siri is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good plan. Or a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? <clears throat> what kind? I guess we could... Cupcakes? Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. Uh, that wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Huh, <laughs> cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Yuri is still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason that I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Yuri can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up getting her on my case. Uh, I end up letting her get on my case about things. Blah. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Wah! I want my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Eat, sorry. Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you gotta have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over to see if Monica is being overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on, at least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Sayori glances around at herself. How's it written all over me? Well, you were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all, all over the place. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair trying to straighten it out. <clears throat> Mark McCauley just cheered 50 bits and says, I'm a very good narrator. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. No one's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Hehe. <laughs> This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking about how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? It did when I bought it. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. Hey, <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. <laughs> Phew, that's so much better. Siri puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, when I won't get a bo I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying it like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. I didn't say anything embarrassing. 
Jeez, well, anyway, just focus on, on t trying to wake up a little earlier. If only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine, it's a deal. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Maybe you should come wake me up in the morning? You're doing it again, Sayori! But I was just joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay!